Uh, we do have to crown world champions in the meantime this yeah. week. And I'm looking forward to this conversation with you about this game because tactically it's a really fascinating one to me. I was chatting to Murray about it maybe Friday. Just the thought that even 18 months ago, I, I would have thought this was quite a straightforward game to break down. But with the way New Zealand have improved, there are so many prisms through which you can view this game as being interesting and as being just unbelievably close. I think Bucky's odds reflect that. Actually, New Zealand are slight favourites in the places where I've checked, just out of curiosity. Um, I don't know. Kick us off on what do you think... Where do you think the winning and losing of this game is if you were trying to pinpoint a couple of areas to begin with? Hmm. I'll kick us off. I was late to the party watching Chasing the Sun, the 2019 World Cup doco, but that consumed a little bit of my time on the the long journey back to Australia. I didn't realise how much currency South Africa placed on beating New Zealand in 2018 in Wellington and 2019. They obviously got the draw. I don't know, our last last play of the game, I'm pretty sure Chelsea and Kobe scores. Um, but with that in mind, the game was meaningless in Twickenham. But what South Africa did to New Zealand, and you would say it was an out-of-character New Zealand performance, but there's two games we have to look at. New Zealand against South Africa Rugby Championship, South Africa versus New Zealand in Twickenham. Um, let's start with New Zealand and the Rugby Championship because... They, that was probably the catalyst to their huge uptick in form, I would say. And if you look at that first try, it's a three-minute uh, ball-and-play sequence. Everything that they would have planned for. Their carry was excellent. Their core skills were good. Their breakdown was accurate. And then the key evolution of their game was their, their kicking game. So the trigger was ultimately Will Jordan, who's been the player of the World Cup, winning back a contestable kick. Um Barrett getting into second receiver, throws a lovely double pump when Pimpy shoots and, and throws a long pass out to Jordan, who again makes something out of nothing, gets tackled, releases the ball, goes again. Aaron Smith is in support to score the opening try, and that was just world-class rugby from, from New Zealand. And the theme of kicking continued throughout that game. It was 28 New Zealand kicks to South Africa's 14 only. And um, a lot of their tries came from a New Zealand second try again. A lovely contestable from Wanga. Mark Talay in the air wins back possession. Then they go straight to a kick pass from Barrett to, to our man, Will Jordan, again. And then a couple of phases later, Moanga chips over the top, gets the bounce for, it was one of the Barrett guys, I'm not sure if it was Jordy or, or Bowden. And then Will Jordan steps into first receiver and, and finds Shannon Frizzell, who probably had his best opening 40 minutes in an all-black jersey, I'd say. And... That was what we've probably seen from New Zealand in the World Cup is the range of their kicking game as well. How they leverage their contestable stuff, their short kicking game, which we saw against Ireland, their kick passes. So you've got such a variety of, of exposing teams through the boot. They will have taken huge interest in what England did to South Africa, obviously, um, from a contestable perspective. I'm not sure they're going to want to get into that complete profile again where it becomes quite slow and one pace. They're, they're definitely going to want to play with tempo. Uh, but it was a little game of two halves because South Africa did bring on the bomb squad second half and the momentum started to shift. Just before that time, New Zealand kept South Africa out with a massive defensive shift on their own line. Again, another part of the game that's improved immeasurably, you would say, since rugby championship to World Cup final. But then South Africa started to eat some scrum penalties, got some dominance there scored a mall try to to Malcolm Marks, obviously. And then LaRue came off the bench. He, he was instrumental in one of their tries, steps up to first receiver, finds Chelsea and Kobe. And you could see why <laughs> the bottom squad is so effective for Safia, just what they were able to do to New Zealand that second half. So big, big game. You would say New Zealand definitely came out on the right side, but there was kind of small little incidents where you thought, okay, South Africa found the template that's, that's definitely going to, I think when the two benches come on, I think particularly at set piece time, South Africa clearly have a huge upper hand there. So I think De Groot and Lomax going as deep as they can is going to be critically important. And then you shift to the Twickenham game and it's just a completely different profile of game. Like obviously New Zealand uncharacteristically, uncharacteristically in discipline conceded 14 penalties. Obviously the red card to Barrett um, Sam Kane goes in the bin for 
a more than discretion. But like Southgate dominated the more some smart little front peel plays when when Barrett was gone. Uh, marks to um, potentially fat the Kirk down the right side to score. Um, five line out steals. Their attacking kicking game, Southgate was brilliant. They obviously saw something when they reviewed the game in, in the rugby championship, the backfield space, because between Delande, LaRue and LeBoc, they tried a lot of a little attacking kick. So again, interesting to see if that comes into play this weekend. And scrum dominance, six scrum penalties. Like we saw the importance of that against England, the green. Like ultimately no scrum, no win is absolutely true. And just pointing back to that, the Chasing the Sun documentary, like the psychology for South Africa, I think is so, so important. Always felt to playing South African teams that if they feel like they've got physical dominance that they can assert on you and it's starting to pay off, that they just double down on it. They go harder, they go harder and they've got the bench to come on and and make teams really pay. So judging by those two games, my... We won't get into predictions at this stage, but it's going to be some hell of a contest. <laughs>